in 1920, World War I had just recently come to a close. And this new decade saw a restless American culture that was beginning to rebel against the moral standards of the past. In Dayton, Ohio, a group of believers had been uniting in prayer, believing for God to move through the city and transform lives. One of the leaders of these meetings was Pastor A.B. Cox. Through these prayer meetings that had been happening for two years, the group decided to launch an evangelistic crusade in the city of Dayton. And while they weren't sure they had the means or the ability to pull off such an event, they took a big leap of faith and decided to invite one of the most powerfully used and well-known evangelists of the day, one of whom was said drew greater crowds than Teddy Roosevelt or P.T. Barnum, a lady by the name of Amy Semple McPherson. Soon after the invitation was sent, Sister Amy, as she was often called, replied to the invitation through her response in this letter. Please excuse. Haste today and write me again if the Lord lays definitely upon your heart the matter of my coming there. We can only pray the Lord to guide us so that not a moment's unnecessary time be wasted, for surely today, if ever, the king's business requires haste. Your very grateful sister in the king's glad service, Amy Semple McPherson. Soon, arrangements were made, and what would turn out to be one of the city's greatest revival moments was scheduled to be held at one of Dayton's newer facilities that was built to honor the American soldiers from the Civil and Spanish-American War Memorial Hall. When the time of the revival arrived on May 13th of 1920, the city of Dayton was abuzz for Amy's visit. Two blocks away from Memorial Hall, her limousine was stopped by a traffic jam of streetcars, automobiles, and ambulances. The sidewalks were packed with pedestrians. The sick and the injured were carried on cots. Some were brought in on hospital beds from as far away as Cincinnati and Piqua, Ohio. The turnout was nothing short of astounding. Police were everywhere trying to direct traffic. Finally, the doors of Memorial Hall had to be locked because not one more person could be squeezed into the building. And as the doors closed, you could hear the disappointed moans from those left outside. Sister Amy took the stage in a long white dress, and she said, I cannot heal these people. It is Jesus Christ in me who alone has the power of healing the sick as well as saving souls. You must believe that he will heal you. As Amy prayed, the power of God began to fall. Many got out of wheelchairs and began to walk. The deaf heard, the blind began to see. Heart diseases, cancers, and ailments of all types were completely healed by God's amazing power. In the meeting's aftermath, thousands of people had been saved, delivered, and healed from all types of afflictions and diseases. The effects from God's visit to Dayton from the three weeks of meetings continued to be felt for quite some time afterwards. Pastor A.B. Cox would shortly after write, The question heard everywhere through Dayton, in homes, on streets, in offices, factories, and all business places was, What meaneth this? The general verdict was, We have never seen it on this fashion before. In the beginning of this great campaign, a stone was not left unturned by the little handful of saints who had been holding on for two years and praying for such a revival. It is impossible to describe the meeting in human language. The healing services were beyond description. Never have we witnessed such a sight. It was a scene never to be forgotten. It was wonderful. Souls are still being saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Lord is graciously working in our midst. As we honor our spiritual forefathers, the prayer for our city remains the same 90 years later. God visit and transform Dayton once again.